Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bamford Chapel in Northern United Reformed Church on this beautiful Palm Sunday morning. It's great to see everyone. Sorry, can you not? Am I? I'm on all right. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, speak up. Okay, I'm on. Um, just a couple of notices uh, to remind you of things happening uh, next week. So next uh, Sunday, the Easter breakfast is, is on um, from 9 o'clock in, in the schoolroom. Uh, please join um, us you know, as we have breakfast together. Junior Church will be serving breakfast. We do need to know numbers, so if you can sign up under the clock. Uh, would be, that would really help junior church leaders. Um, also, just to highlight the uh, one o'clock walk for uh, at one thirty. Is it on the sheet of one? No, it's on the sheet of one thirty. You told me one earlier on. <laughs> one thirty. It's a, a Good Friday ramble uh, led by Andy Platt. As long as his knee um, enables him to do that. Um, with a, a stop off at Millcroft Tea Gardens and also to highlight the drama at seven o'clock. Um, if you can try and support that. In the newsletter it says that the storming service is at ten AM this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the service is, set, it says 10 o'clock on the service sheet. It's not, it's 10.30 as usual. So just sorry about all that um, kerfuffle. But anyway, I think we'll all know what's going on now. Um, other thing is, please try and attend the church meeting today, straight after the service. It's a really important meeting. Um, and it, it, we need people to come and express their opinions. Uh, the main topic for um, discussion is around um, same-sex marriage. So please come and try and support that. There will be other items on the agenda, but that, that is the main uh, discussion topic. Um, I think that's everything, unless anyone else has got any notice, but you can do them perhaps in family time. Uh, <laughs> I'd now really like to welcome Ruth, Ruth Watson. We're really delighted to see Ruth, um, and we have to confess that we're having a little catch-up, which is why we're two minutes late starting the service. Um, so it's so lovely to see Ruth back uh, here with us today, and we thank you for covering um, David's service, so thank you very much. And also to Barbara. Um, thank you for playing this morning, Barbara. Um, so we look forward to um, our worship um, through Ruth and through Barbara's play. You've switched you off because you didn't say. <laughs> they have control over me. Um, so, yeah, we are, we are internally grateful to the tech team and, of course, Doors Stewart's elders and to um, the coffee team. Um, so, We'll, uh, we'll get on with, this, with uh, what we're here for, which is the important bit about our worship today. Thank you. Thank you. Ruth. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Morning. Just checking he's still awake. Um, it's nice to be back. Um, you never know, one day I might come in my own right. Uh, <laughs> I'm warning. Um, now, welcome to worship on this uh, Palm Sunday service. Uh, we're going to begin with a reading from the Psalms, and I understand I have volunteers. All right. It's fine, I I'll, I'll read it. Um, so, from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. 
you have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Now it wouldn't be Palm Sunday without one of these. So you will also notice that I am not wearing my dog collar. I am wearing a weird looking t-shirt and there are two other weird looking t-shirts. So while I explain why I'm wearing what I'm wearing, I have some willing volunteers or some volunteered people who are going to give out your palm crosses. So you may see on, on my t-shirt our little, little donkey and we have Jesus, the light of the world, and we have Jesus on the cross. When I was at Worsley Road, um, they knew that I often wore hoodies. I still do. And I challenged the young people to design me some T-shirts that I could then wear while I was out and about. And they rose to the challenge, so they made me three... They designed three T-shirts for Christmas and three T-shirts for Easter, um, or for Lent and Easter. So these are the three Easter ones... So the Lent ones uh, and Easter, and I have three at home that are Christmas ones. But I've never had chance to wear them, um, because when they designed them, it then became lockdown, um, so I didn't get to go out and, and wear them. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to wear it today. There are images on the back. I don't know whether you can read that. For 40 days, so that's why we have Pancake Day. So that, that's what the young people wrote. Um, so yes, so this is why I'm in my, my T-shirt um, and why the other T-shirts are there. Do feel free to have a look. There are images on the back um, as well. I might turn them around halfway through. Um, do we all have a palm cross? Right. I am not going to make you walk around the church waving them, don't worry. Um, I have done in the past. I've, I've had churches walking all the way around the building while we've done this, but... I'll let you off for today. Um, we're going to need them for our first hymn because our first hymn, which is Make Way, during the chorus, or you can do it through the whole hymn if you wish, I want you to wave your palm crosses. So when we get to the chorus that talks about making way for Jesus, then I want you to wave your palm cross. Or not, if you choose not to. It's entirely up to you. Um, but let's welcome on this Palm Sunday. So let's sing together, make way, make way.
do feel free to use them in the other hymns as well if you would like to. And so let us pray. Bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you today as the Word made flesh, before all, beyond all, within all, the one in whom all things have their being, yet entering our world of space and time, sharing our humanity, experiencing the joys and sorrows of flesh and blood, living and dying among us so that we might share in the joy of your kingdom. We greet you as the Messiah, the Son of David, King of Israel, Servant of all, Saviour of all, anointed for burial, crowned with thorns and lifted high on a cross, your kingdom not of this world. We greet you as Lord of the empty tomb, the risen Christ, victorious over death, triumphant over evil, the one who has gone before us, whose spirit walks with us now and who will be there to greet us at our journey's end. Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We greet you as the King of kings and Lord of lords, the ascended and exalted Lamb of God, ruler of the ends of the earth, enthroned in splendor, seated at the right hand of the Father, worthy of all honor and glory and blessing, the King of glory. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you today with joyful worship and reverent praise. Hear our prayer and accept our homage, for we offer it in your name and to your glory. Amen. And so let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing again as the people were expecting something they didn't quite get. So we're going to sing our hymn, which is Meekness and Majesty. Thank you. 
so you've, you've got somebody to read this time. <laughs> so as you might expect, the reading is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you'll find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Thank you. Now I'm going to test your knowledge. Are you ready? Whenever you see somebody who's famous, often they will say to you, do you know who I am? So this is your question. Do you know who I am? So do we know who that is? Who is it? Albert Einstein. How many of you have been to any of his lectures? <laughs> How many would go to any of his lectures? I would. <laughs> but it's not the sort of topic that everybody would be interested in. Okay, who's this? Go on, who's it? Bluey. Now, my children are too old to know Bluey. Um, but I thought if I put some of the cartoon characters they knew, then nobody else would know them because, well, they're all ancient now. But this is Bluey. How many of you have ever watched Bluey? Yes. How many of you are going to watch Bluey now you've seen it? <laughs> but he's very popular amongst our young people. Okay, who's this? King Charles, ah, now get it right, King Charles the third. III. And bearing in mind, it didn't end well for the other two, but there we go. How many of you went to the coronation? How many of you saw the millions of people that lined the streets for the coronation? Okay, who's this? Taylor Swift. Nobody know who Taylor Swift is. I only know because Mark knows. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my kind of music. How many have been to a Taylor Swift concert? How many would go to a Taylor Swift concert? Some would go, some would go. Yep, yeah, we have some fans. But again, thousands of people go to the concerts to watch Taylor Swift perform. Now, I'm hoping you'll all get this one. <laughs> Who's that? It's Mickey Mouse. How many of you have been to Disneyland, Disney World, the Disney shop? Well, not all of us can get to America, you know. <laughs> okay, again, millions go. Um, did you know that Walt Disney was actually turned down 302 times before... Disneyland took off. 
See, learn something new every day. But millions go along to see Mickey Mouse and all his friends. Who's this? Queen. queen. Not the Queen or the late Queen. This is the band Queen. Um, according to a survey that my husband tells me about, so blame him if it's wrong, um, these are the band that everybody would like to go and see, even ahead of the Beatles. So who has been to a Queen concert before or after Freddie Mercury? I've been after. I was going to say, here, come on, get your hand up. I've been to at least one. But again, it's the band most people would like to go and see, and you will know their music even if you've never actually seen the band perform. Who's this? It is Jesus, you're right. And what's he riding? A donkey. And why is he riding a donkey? Where's he going? Asda. <laughs> <laughs> not to, <laughs> the shot on a Sunday. Uh, <laughs> if you were listening to the reading, where is he going on his donkey? He's going into Jerusalem. Why is he going into Jerusalem? Well, you're not listening to the story. <laughs> he was going into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. He was. Did he go in on his own? No, he didn't. You can see there are people lying in the streets waving their palm branches. They didn't make them into palm crosses then. But they lined the streets. They laid down their cloaks. Anybody would there? <laughs> but <laughs> we won't watch. But lots of people lined the streets because they were expecting this conquering hero to come in and save them and to rescue them. So my question is, who would come out to see you? How many would line the streets when you go into Manchester? Or Salford, which is where I am. Or London. And who would you line the streets for? I'm not asking for an answer now, but something to think about. Who would you line the streets for? Because many celebrities have used their influence, they've used their and power to do good things, but not always. And we will be thinking about that later. But just something to think about. Loads of people have been to see all of those people that you've just seen. But who would we actually go out to see that would have real meaning? Now, as you know, I am here because my father-in-law is not well. He is recovering, so we're we're on the right side of it, but we're, we're still getting there. But I know that there are lots of other things that are happening, and I have a man with a mic who's going to find out all these things that have been happening. We have, we have two things this week. First of all, George had his parents' evening on Thursday, and it was outstanding. The teacher said he's a pleasure to have in his, the classroom. He's very kind, helpful, and looks after other children. And he's progressing really well with his phonics. Uh, and the second one, which George is going to tell you. It was Grandma's birthday on Friday. Good morning, everyone. Again, um, I had Olivia's parents' evening on Thursday. She's doing really, really well. She's achieving above where she should be for her age, and apparently she's got the best handwriting in the whole class. <laughs> Stephen Lawley here. On behalf of Sheila and myself, I'd like to thank everybody for your prayers, concerns and support following Sheila's diagnosis of lung cancer. She went into Withenshaw Hospital last Monday for major surgery and within two days 
she was back home recovering. We just couldn't believe it. And I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank God for the skill and the devotion of all the NHS staff at Withenshaw Hospital. Thank you. Okay, so Benjamin, Harry and Toby wanted me to let you know that we've booked four nights away. They're very excited. We're going to Townsend Farm in Herefordshire, staying at an earth sheltered Hobbit Lodge. I'm hoping for dry weather because there's a little mountain bike tracker through the woods, so they're very excited. Lodge, yeah, an, an earth an earth held sheltered one. I'll show you after. Yeah, and just <laughs> and just one more thing. Harry's been chosen to take part in the school swimming gala tomorrow, so we're very proud of him. Hi, it's Mike here. Diane and I will celebrate our 57th wedding anniversary tomorrow. Remembering. Uh, okay, two things. <laughs> uh, it was my birthday yesterday. So <laughs> uh, and the other thing is uh, about school pastors. So uh, last Wednesday, uh, four of us went into St Cuthbert's School in Rochdale to, for their St Cuthbert's Feast Day. So we were there all day and we, we had all the Year 7 classes uh, telling them about street pastors and school pastors and we had a really good time all the kids are really lovely and all the, all the staff and then the day after we had our second stint of going in at lunchtime so we'll be going in every Thursday lunchtime to talk to the kids uh, so so far it's going really well so anyone who wants to know any more about school pastors please talk to me or Barbara or Addy thank you <laughs> Very sorry, it's not, it's not a news announcement, it's just to, so that everybody's maybe read the front of the thing to know that the church, because it's Holy Week, um, will be open at the times that are shown on the front of the page, and so if there is any people who would just like to sit in here um, to make sure everyone's okay, you know, um, I would, we would be grateful for that. So thank you very much. And by then, all the sh things should have notices on, all the tables should have cloths and activities on, and we're ready to go. Thank you. Yes, uh, we've just come back, well, n Monday this week, we came back from a lovely holiday in Tenerife, which uh, it was beautiful to have some sun. Um, we've got a lovely Sunday day today, but we haven't had a lot of sun recently here, have we? So it was lovely to have some sun. But while we were away, it was David's birthday, it was our fifth wedding anniversary, and it was Mother's Day. So <laughs> we had a, a suitcase full of cards <laughs> on the way there, but it was great. Halim, uh, the Afghan refugee who was uh, living with us, uh, has gone back to Eastbourne because he'd been there about nine months. Um, I think he was badly advised. He came to Rochdale and was then told there was no way he could get accommodation until he'd been here six months. So um, it was sad to see him go, but I think it was the right decision. We've re we enjoyed having him. Fabulous. It's always good to know that there are things happening. Um, there's so much bad things happening in the world. It's nice to hear some good things happening. Um, we also have a family birthday, but she'll kill me if I tell you who it is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just ask her about Thursday. 
Um, I'm saying no more. So we are going to sing again, after which our children are going to leave us and go and do something fun while we do hopefully something fun in here. Um, So we are going to sing, We Have a King That Rides a Donkey. Thank you to those who took me up on my offer of waving your palm crosses. So do have fun, everybody. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have our fun in here as you have your fun in there. And you'll have to come and tell us after over coffee what you've been up to. So having received the story, having received um, our family news, we are now going to give our offering, which is now going to be taken up. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, you have given us so much. Help us to use these, our gifts on this plate and through our banks and in whichever way else that we give, that we can give back for you and show others your love. Amen.
I've tried to choose hymns this morning that if you don't get the opportunity to attend any of the services during Holy Week, still incorporate the story of Holy Week. Because if you go straight from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, you kind of miss the point. Um, because there are things that happen during the week. But I do appreciate that if you're working or if you've got family commitments, it's often difficult um, to go to services during Holy Week itself. Um, but I do encourage you, if you can, to do something during Holy Week, either whether it's coming here and having quiet time or whether it's attending any of the services that are on offer, because then you get a real sense of the celebration on Sunday if you felt the real depths of Good Friday. So our next hymn tells that story, and it's My Song is Love Unknown. My son wouldn't like it because it's got seven verses, so I do apologise, but it does tell the story. So let's sing together. Today, as you may know, is Palm Sunday, and the word palm appears 42 times in the New International Version of the Bible, of which eight refer to hands. Most of those are references in Leviticus about holding the oil 
in the hand as they are anointed. But the one from Isaiah that we are going to think about later is from Isaiah 49. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. In other words, we cannot be forgotten by God. And this is something to hold on to, particularly given that this week is Holy Week where many of the stories are reflecting people who leave or betray or deny or anoint. And there is a general misunderstanding of what Jesus was doing. Even Jesus himself quotes the psalmist on the cross when he asks God why he has been forsaken. But more of that later. I don't want to spoil it too much for the events of this week. Today we are celebrating Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem of Jesus on a donkey, which fulfills the scripture from Zechariah, where he states, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on the colt, a foal of a donkey. The words of the people receiving Jesus reflect the psalm, that we heard at the beginning of our service. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, save us. Hosanna. Jesus was coming to save the people. But from what? Now, we have the benefit of hindsight. We know what happens next. But how can we recapture some of that excitement some of that expectation, and some of that hope, now that we know the end of the story. The people were promised a Messiah, someone that was coming to rescue them from their situation. But what they hoped for and what they got were completely different, even though he did exactly what it said on the tin. So often we get caught up in celebrity that we forget the person behind it and the reason they're doing what they're doing. If you just think recently this week about the furor surrounding Cape Middleton and that doctored photograph, I'd love to doctor my photographs, I just don't know how. (laughs) And then the leaked medical notes, and now obviously she's come out with the statement. And in the past, how many of our celebrities that we grew up with are now behind bars? but many still crave that 15 minutes of fame. You only have to look at how many reality programs there are, how many celebrities actually follow through on their fame. And what about us? What are we expecting this Palm Sunday? Are we among the crowd shouting Hosanna, waving our palm branches? Are we laying down our cloaks or even our lives? For Jesus, to honour him as King and Saviour? Or are we simply counting down the days to Easter, when we can finally eat chocolate again? Or hoping to bypass Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, because they're too depressing, and we'll just go straight to the celebration on Easter Sunday? Or are we just generally, well, you know, been there, done that, and lost all interest in the whole Easter thing? Because we do it every year. Our challenge is to revisit Palm Sunday, to revisit where we stand in our faith, where we are in that crowd, where we are during this Holy Week. Because if you miss the events of Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, we miss the whole point of Easter. For without the darkness of those days, we lose the light of the resurrection. So this Holy Week, let us follow the journey to the cross and beyond and allow our lives to be changed forever. Amen. Now hands are really important during Holy Week. You need your hands for waving. Go on, you can all wave at me. There you see. Uh, For breaking, Jesus broke bread. You need your hands to do that. Anointing, eating, washing, nailing. So as we come to think of our world and think of the people in our world, 
I invite you to remember that God has your name on the palm of God's hand, so he doesn't forget. And I want you, if you choose to, to just look at your hands as we pray. Think about the things that you use your hands for, but know that your name is known. So let us pray. This is Holy Week, when on this Palm Sunday we wave our palm branches and lay down our cloaks. May we celebrate the coming of Jesus into Jerusalem and into our lives as we celebrate today. This is Holy Week, where Jesus overturned the tables of the money changers and was later betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Lord, help us around the world and here in this church to channel our anger against injustice into practical action rather than a search for revenge. May we learn to forgive those who betray us and seek to reconcile those who are hurting. This is Holy Week, where Jesus was anointed and then washed his disciples' feet. Lord, help us to be humble and to serve others without looking for reward or fame. Help us to be willing to do the work that is needed rather than looking for the jobs that will get us noticed. Help us also to support our neighbours, whoever they may be, that we might bring hope and a future to those who are struggling. This is Holy Week, where Jesus shared a meal with his friends. May we too share not only our food, but our talents, our time, our homes to those in need, but challenge the systems that have made that need happen. This is Holy Week, where Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane for a plan B, for this task to be taken away. And so we remember all those who are struggling to face life at the moment because of debt, ill health, bereavement, mental health issues, family difficulties. Use us to bring comfort, compassion and hope and especially this week for our prayer requests. We remember the royal family, Maureen Grind, the Demmer family, the special services that are coming up this week and our own journeys of faith. From our missional partnership prayer list, St Andrew's URC Methodist LEP, for Jeanette, for Sheila and Steve, for David and Margaret, for James and Fiona, for Zoe and Paul, for Elsie, for Sue, for Ken and Elizabeth, for Dave, for Judith, and for Alwyn. And in a moment of quiet, the names known only to us and to you. This is Holy Week, where you gave your son for us. May we stay with the sadness so that we can truly celebrate the resurrection. Journey with us this Holy Week and always. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning again speaks of the journey into Jerusalem. Ride on, ride on in majesty.
hope you are going to forgive me. One of the downsides of only doing online worship is you miss a good sing. Because um, I do evening worship in the dining room and the boys would hear me if I was singing along. <laughs> and they'd tell me. So uh, as I know that you have a sung blessing, I've, I've um, requested that we sing the blessing this morning just so I can get a bit extra singing in. And I like it anyway, so we're having it. So as we sing, if you know it, please do look at each other as we are blessing each other as we go out into this special week. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara. 